Hi everyone. Well, it's time for another mixed media morsel. So I hope you guys are ready. I will um, put up what you need for this um, particular technique at the beginning of the video, but it's very simple once again. And I wanted to show you my, uh, I posted this in the Facebook group, but I wanted to show you this was how my original page turned out. And for those of you who aren't on Facebook, um, I, I mentioned it over there, but I want to mention it to you guys. I really apologize. I forgot an important step in doing this process. And so it didn't turn out the way that I intended it to. But before you put down the paint and then the plastic wrap, you really need to put a layer of gesso or maybe white paint and let it dry completely and then do your paint with water and your plastic wrap. And the reason for that is because if you put the paint like I did on a page that's not been prepped, it tends to want to soak into the paper. And what the idea is that when you put the plastic wrap on and then you kind of bunch it up a little bit and make wrinkles, the color kind of separates and makes little patches of color, which leaves, if you do the gesso technique, it leaves a white line in between those shapes and it looks like this. I did it again so that you guys could see the proper way it's supposed to look. So then it looks like this. And that's really what I was going for. And if you remember right from the previous video I did, that blue page that I showed you that I had a dragonfly on, it had a lot of these white areas and that really gives it a lot of contrast which is really, really, really cool. Now, these, this other background is going to be fine. We'll still be able to use it for uh, something, I'm sure. I mean, I'm not going to let it go to waste or anything. So, if you have a problem, don't worry about it. I even tore mine where it stuck to the uh, inside cover here. <laughs> I tore it a little bit when I was... Um, uh, I don't know when I tore it. When, when did it stick there? I guess when I was working on this page, on this side, it, um, it stuck to the cover. So... Anyway, that's the way it should look, and um, if you if it, if yours didn't turn out that way, please give it another try and just use another page in your book, and you know try it again and see if you can get it to, you know, really push on that uh, saran wrap or plastic wrap to uh, to make little peaks in the plastic, and and that gives you that that cool kind of look. So I did it again this morning, thinking, well, this is kind of cool, um, you know, with the white showing in the background. So I tried it again, and I painted the page black this time, and uh, tried some bright colors on it, and it kind of did okay, but I kind of had to do it in a hurry, because then I realized, oh no, i got to make a video, and I need this book. <laughs> so I couldn't let it sit, like, overnight and dry it, so I, I did use the heat tool, I held it way up high. And just let you know the warm air blow on it. But anyway, I got a, a black background with a little bit of color on it and um, and some texture. I mean, it's got the cool bumpiness from the uh, plastic wrap, and it's got that shiny uh, shiny coat that the plastic wrap kind of leaves behind. So it looks really cool. So I like it, and I'll definitely use that. Um, you know, and I'll put something on there and use that for a cool background. And uh, this one has a little bit of the shine. Um, but not as much. This first one actually has more shine uh, than the second one did. You can see it a little bit there. But this one really did a lot of shine. So I thought that looked really awesome. I mean, it didn't do exactly the same technique. You can see a little bit of it here, but I just think the uh, contrast of those bright colors on the black looks good. And also, what I was afraid might happen in this little tiny uh, composition book has happened. Got a page coming out. <laughs> so, I'm afraid this may happen to you guys, too. Um, if it does, feel free to, you know, switch to a different um, notebook. I'm thinking I might just end up punching through this and putting a binder ring in the top of the, uh, in the corner. Or maybe two of them, even. Maybe punch two holes to hold it together. Because I, I know that we're going to make you know, messes and it's going to get wet. I think this came loose because of, of the fact of been using it a lot and it got wet and so it's going to come apart, I'm afraid, because these are just glued together. Uh, these are not like uh, 
your regular composition books that are stitched down the center. They're folded pages stitched in the middle. And these are just glued in. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. But if they all come out, they'll all come out. And then I'll just cut these covers off and I'll, I'll keep them. And, uh, and I'll just punch holes in here and put some little binder rings in there and it'll still be, you know, serving the same purpose. So it's not going to be a problem. So, and then <clears throat> I got this the other day. I ate one of those Dove chocolates. Um, and inside, look what it said. Get messy. <laughs> and I mean, who am I to argue with that, right? We all need to get messy from time to time. So I think we should get messy today with some Mod Podge or Collage Podge. I'm going to use Collage Podge. And um, some scraps. And we're going to do... Um, one of those, uh, like I did before, you may have seen my video before that I did a little ATC for my niece and I did a collaged background. And so I thought we would do that today so we'd have that in our little book. And I went to my scrap box and I pulled out all of the big items that were in the scrap box and then all of this stuff is sitting in the bottom. So that's what I want you to, to do is just grab all of your scraps and um, let's use these teeny tiny little pieces that, you know, generally would be would be thrown out. And let's just uh, glue them, collage them down onto a page in our book. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get my, my deli paper protectors, page protectors here, and put them in. And we're just going to collage down some scraps. And if you, for whatever reason, don't have any of these tiny little pieces laying around, then just go grab some napkins, some printed napkins, or some uh, of your painted papers, your jelly prints, um, your painted deli papers. I've got all that stuff here. I've even got some stuff that has come off of some packaging uh, this is a thin layer. Uh, this was a cardboard box of, um, I believe, uh, lunch meat. And it was a brown cardboard box. And so I just tore it off and then I just peeled off the top layer so that it's not a piece of thick cardboard anymore. And yet it has this cool, you know, little pattern. And I thought that would be so cute, you know, collaged onto a tiny area like what we are working on in our books. So I did that with that. Here's another packaging, the same kind of thing. Just got a pretty little design, so I just peeled away the top layer and uh, threw away the uh, piece of cardboard that was mangled, but just kept the pretty little design because on a small scale, it'll look really cute. So like I said, I've got some pieces of napkins here and some, and uh, this is a piece of, um, of a cupcake, uh, cupcake uh, paper that has a zebra print on it. So I'll tear some of that maybe and use it. And uh, more napkins, music paper, and tech, book text. And this is a piece of tissue that I stamped with some music. So, um, yeah, I mean, you all have some scraps, I know. So grab them and let's use them and make all that color uh, pay off for you on something cool rather than just sitting in a box or being thrown in the trash So I'm gonna put this in fast forward and just get to gluing down some um, Pieces and I'll come back in a second
Okay, so we, um, we've got this all dry now, and um, I'm ready to, I'm just gonna do one more step on here. The majority of the background is still gonna show. I just wanted to do a little bit of, um, just to put a letter on it, kind of like I did that one uh, ATC that I did for my niece. I wanted to show you guys too that if you're having, um, if you have a page that you need to dry, if you take a couple of these binder clips like this and set them in your book, it makes a nice little place for the for the page to be propped open uh, so that the back side is getting air as well as the uh, side that you're working on. So um, I'm just going to use a permanent marker. This is a Sharpie from the dollar store. And I wanted to point out, too, before I do this, I wanted to point out that um, all of the colors and all, I love the way that looks. And to me, I mean, you may not want to do this, but to me, um, I try to go back on the top layer and add a few little black um, pieces because it, to me, that helps the colors to pop more. And you see this nice uh, stark contrast um, of the colors and the dark. So I like to do that just to help with the look of it, you know. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to make my initial and um, just a nice big C right here in the in the middle of the page. <clears throat> And it's, you know, it's funny to write on because it's a little bumpy and, you know, because of the, uh, all the collaging, but it works. You just got to, you know, be careful. Don't hit a bump and go off to the side. <laughs> and I'm going to just uh, thicken it up a little bit. This uh, dollar store um, Sharpie is from the Dollar Tree. There's two in a package for a dollar. And um, I like it. It's got like a glossy uh, finish to it. You see how the black looks shiny too? That's just from the marker. So it's kind of neat. All right, and I'm gonna use a um, Posca pen and um, probably just add some Add some dots. Well, I think I might thicken it just a tiny bit more here. So there's what the C looks like. And I'm going to take uh, the black Posca pen and just uh, just draw a little doodly, you know, quick little doodle type border around the edge to frame it a little bit. And I think I'll put a few little circles here and there <clears throat> on the line. I think that's probably good. One more here. All right, so there we go. I hope you guys enjoy it and have fun using up your scraps. And um, we'll see you again soon. Everybody make sure, if you haven't already, go and check out the uh, Mixed Media Morsels Facebook group and um, put in your request to join so you can come in and join in the fun with us. And those of you who are not on Facebook, I have made a playlist on my YouTube channel. 
and I titled it Mixed Media Morsels by Other Artists. And uh, any of the uh, artists out there that are making videos doing these techniques, I will try to catch each one and put it on that playlist so that you can see it. There's already, I think, four on the playlist. And um, so check those out if you're not on Facebook. Even if you are on Facebook and you'd like to see the videos, you know, come on over and find that playlist so you can check out what everybody's doing. All right, we'll see you guys again soon. Have fun. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, changed my mind. I'm not quite done. <laughs> I took this little uh, coffee cup stamp. It's uh, it's from a, a set of Prima stamps called... Uh, it doesn't have a name. Coffee Break. It's called Coffee Break. And um, so I wanted to use this little cup because it's mostly black. You know, it's not like an open stamp, like these are open stamps, it's a solid. So I stamped it on a piece of tissue. I, I, I didn't want to stamp it onto the page because it's so lumpy, I was afraid I wouldn't get a good impression. So this will make it uh, just blend right in and be part of the page. And I'm not gonna cut it out because then you'll have these straight edges that might be noticeable. So I'm going to tear it out and get it off of this piece first. So I'm just going to tear it kind of close to the image, but try not to get too close. You don't want to tear it off if you do this. So just getting it as close as I can, kind of keeping my fingernail down there to protect the image so it doesn't tear. See what I mean? Okay. And then I'm going to Mod Podge it down and it'll blend right into the page and you probably won't see any of the tissue paper at all. But you'll see a nice black coffee cup there, so it'll be good. I'm not sure if we'll be able to read the words where it says coffee break because that's probably going to fade away too and then the color's going to show through, but it might work. We'll see. I'm not concerned if it doesn't show you because you'll see the cup. And that's what I'm really going after anyway, is just the uh, the cup itself. So, okay. Now, let me get my brush dried off. And I used the stays on ink so that it won't run. And I dried it with the uh, heat tool. Okay. So let's see how this works. I haven't done this in a while either where you use a little tissue to blend in to your page. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to put it, let's see. I was thinking about right there. Yeah, that'll be okay right in that area. Yeah, you can see how the color's coming through on the word. But that's okay, because you can still read it. So I'm thinking it's working out pretty darn good. See, those ragged edges don't make it where it just doesn't even hardly show. But if you, have, if you cut it straight out and made a little square box, you would see that. It would be much more easily visible. All right. And I'm going to coat the whole thing in, um, in Mod Podge. I have found recently, and I really like, um, I like this about the Collage Podge. It is, um, it's not quite as glossy. Even the matte Mod Podge has a little bit of shine to it. And the Collage Podge does too, but it's more like, I want to call it like a satiny finish. It's it's not as shiny, but I think I want this one to be shiny. That C is so shiny 
that see how the coffee cup is now looking kind of dull? I don't know if you can tell that. But yeah, see there's no shine on that at all. So I'm going to put a little coat of Mod Podge on the top. And um, I think I'll like that better, being shinier. And another thing, too, is Mod Podge smells to me. I don't like the smell of it at all. But uh, the Collage Podge doesn't really have that much of an odor. Nothing like this. All right. So this will make the whole thing look shinier. And I think that the collage page um, is better about the pages not sticking together, too, because it doesn't have that slicker finish. So just, just to let you guys know if you haven't used one or the other, just to give you an idea of what they're both like. All right. That's all I'm going to do to that. And I'm going to dry it up again. Now you can see how, let me see if I can get a glare on there. You can see how the whole page has a glossy look now. Where before, just the C was glossy. And the cup is also glossy now. See? So that's why I chose to go over it with that. Just to give the entire thing that same finish that the C had. And you know, while I was drying that, I, I thought I'm going to take this white Posca pen and um, color in these dots here. I think it'll brighten it up a little bit more on the border. Yeah, when that's dry, I'll go around those circles again with the black just to um, sharpen them up again where the white went over. I like that better. I like the white in the in the border too. I think it just helps it to uh, to look brighter and more playful. So um, okay, so now we're done, <laughs> and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks everybody. Bye bye.